Welcome to a noob's guide to Helmand Gorst. This is Helmand Gorst, a necromancer so infamous no one had ever heard of him before he was a Total War DLC. Western Sylvania, born and raised on a farm, is where he spent most of his early days. So let's take a minute, just sit right there, and I'll tell you how he became a necromantic prince with no hair. In this video, we'll go over Helman Gorst's lore, how that translates to gameplay in Total War Warhammer 3, and how this unlikely candidate wound up in the game to begin with. When Helman Gorst was announced for the second ever DLC pack for Total War Warhammer, it caused a minor uproar, as he had about the same level of cultural relevance as the What Is It from the 1996 Olympic Games. Helmand Gorst comes from the Sigmar's Blood campaign of Warhammer Fantasy, which set up the final run to the end times, but we won't hold that against it. And thanks to an interview with Total War DLC director Rich Aldrich, we now know that Gorst made it into the game because he thought it would be cool to theme a DLC around that forgotten gotten campaign. And while fans weren't initially happy about having a legendary lord named after the world's best mayonnaise and a beetroot soup, he's carved his name on their hearts since, as only a necromancer can. The youngest of five brothers, Hellman worked with them and their father in the equine support services industry. In Hellman's case, that was groom and shoe horses. For those of you less agriculturally informed, that means he slowly gained their trust with toys and gifts before he took advantage of them like a, well, a CA employee, apparently. Hellman had a well-known love for danger and the open road, dreaming of one day escaping his humdrum life for some foreign adventure. He would find any excuse to leave his small podunk village and deliver messages to the nearby cities of Ulfheim and Vassell, where he would linger like that last guest at your party who won't take the hint until you put on Semisonic. But one day, Hellman returned home to find his brothers and father's fungus-blackened corpses waiting on him. Spores choked the air of his family home as the bodies lay in contorted agony on their beds. The plague of blue roses had taken them all in his absence. Gorst couldn't accept their loss. He had dreamed so long of escaping that in their hour of need, he hadn't been there when his family needed him most, and in his guilt, he lay down beside them in their shared bed and embraced his family, knowing the virulent plague would take him as well. But it didn't, which he should have known already because, well, you know. Learning that the Plague of Blue Roses could be survived, Gorst threw himself into the study of the dark arts and necromancy to save his family as well. He already knew veterinary medicine, and weren't humans just bipedal horses? Surely he could cure his brother's deadness with a balm, a tonic, or fresh grass from the top field. Word about a crazy man experimenting on corpses travels faster than bad gas in a small town, and when it reached witch hunter Albrecht von Corden, his ears weren't the only thing that pricked up in interest. The Imperial Inquisitor intended to prosecute Hellman's heresy with all the prejudice he could muster, and traveled to the Gorst farm with his torch already lit. But Hellman Gorst was ready for him. He had cunningly disguised himself in a mass grave of plague victims, then waited until Von Corden got bored and left. And that's when Gorst made his move. He bravely loaded his brothers onto a moldering carriage, stole two oxen from the village, and then slunk away in the dead of night like a true hero. Gorst then hid in a place that no sane mortal would ever look for him. <laughs> there, Gorst found his soul grew stronger, and he stopped a while to ponder. Graves and spires, a necropolis of ire, built in times of lore. Its stones that glowed with ghostly lights, the travelers yet avoid at night. Yet something watched him just out of sight, brooding in a cryptic door. There upon a midnight dreary, Manfred pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. A pale figure wreathed in blood, who sat among grimoires spread upon the floor. So still he sat, Gorst thought him napping, until there came a rapping, of someone gently tapping, tapping, tapping upon a book of yore. Do you wish, he muttered, to seek forgotten lore? Only this, said Gorst, 
and damned himself forevermore. The vampire count saw a powerful madness in Gorst's eyes, a hunger for knowledge and power that he recognized in himself. Instead of killing Kelman for the insolence of interrupting his studies, Manfred took him on as a pupil and shared with him the secrets of necromancy, teaching him spells from the lore of vampires, and even gifted him an unholy tome of dark magic, the Liber Noctis. Now, it's not a lost farrier that wanders the wide world but a master of undeath. His bone-ribbed cart is no longer drawn by sickly oxen, but the reanimated corpses of the four brothers he rescued from the village charnel pit. Now, they join Gorst in his adventurous wanderings, forced to stumble along at the head of their brother's unliving host, a shambling mockery of life. Hellman, on the other hand, is living his best life. From his perspective, this has all been a never-ending family road trip. He's surrounded by friends, constantly seeing new sights, and always meeting new people. Gorst even named his faction the Caravan of Blue Roses, as he travels around the world checking items off his bucket list like an aging rock star in a Winnebago. He even has that Keith Richards look going on, where his skin has become so leathery, swords can't cut it. Your campaign begins only a stone's throw away from Grand Cafe, but don't expect to get there anytime soon, as Gorst's chosen mode of transportation is slower than Christmas. Seriously, he could get out and walk faster. But it does keep him from outpacing his rabid groupies. See, Gorst doesn't lead a troop of speedy 28 days later style zombies. Hell, they're not even walking dead zombies. They're real zombies. A slowly pushing, inexorable tide of angry consumers trampling down their fellow man, gouging flesh from bodies in grisly, glistening chunks just to grab a television on Black Friday discount, exactly the way George Romero intended. You won't be surprised to hear that zombies are what Gorse specializes in, with nearly every one of his unique skills turning these base-tier units into unholy nightmares to fight against. He even gives them poison attacks, because zombies have a bite like a Komodo dragon. To win a battle, unlike the usual strategy of Hammer and Anvil, Gorst relies on glacial tactics, slowly grinding down his enemies over the course of a millennia. But Gorst doesn't just summon and forget zombies. Much like he expected, necromancy and equine medicine have a great deal in common. Railings from graveyard fences can replace missing limbs. Broken backs are buttressed by rotten planks or knocked back into place with old coffin nails. And if they ever throw a shoe, Gorst can always hammer it back on again. Really, nearly any debilitating wound can be repaired if you have a strong enough stomach. In-game, Gorst is one of the most healing-centered campaigns you can play. Atop his unique Brothers Gorst corpse cart, he's constantly shouting encouragement to his zombie friends below, healing them while his foes slowly succumb to the knock noxious fumes wafting around him. And while Gorst himself is frankly useless for dealing damage, he can heal himself and regenerate health almost indefinitely, thanks to an extra high healing cap in his abilities, which makes him especially difficult to deal with as his army maintains their damage output over time. Because when he heals zombies, they come back again. The more unit models you have alive, the more animations that can play that can deal damage, which lets him field one of the game's least likely doom stacks. All you need to do is recruit a bunch of zombies and then park Gorst near the front line. Throw out the occasional spell from the lore of vampires and then let your zombie buddies do the work. Keep the corpse carts and the mortis engine you get at the start of the campaign alive and you'll be gravy until deep into the mid game, as they also buff everything around them. And when you play as Gorst, each of those carts gets the ability to summon another unit of zombies for themselves, because you didn't have enough of them already. Playing Hellman Gorst asks you to embrace the spooky dookie and put on your favorite Halloween mixtape. Just make sure the time warp is on there because it takes Gorst forever to get into battle or fight a battle or generally get out of bed in the morning. No joke, you'll be fighting a lot in his campaign as when you battle with zombies, they auto-calculate about as well as an abacus does. So figure out where that fast forward button is now. That way, all you'll need to do is smash open the graveyards and bring the monster mash. Because when you bring out the Hellmans, you bring out the best. And this has been a noob's guide to Hellman Gorst. Thanks for watching. You can vote on which noob's guide comes next by supporting the channel and joining our Patreon for only a dollar. Our next video will be Krokgar, the last defender of 
nope, I'm not even going to try that word until after I've researched it properly, because even dinosaurs with robotic doom fists deserve their due diligence.